Hi, I'm Marion Landry, Technical Marketing Manager for Autodesk. In this Tips and Tricks, I want to show you how you can create a custom environment and showcase using an HDR image that you've downloaded from the internet or that you have as part of your collection. Let's have a look at this uh, quick and easy way to create a custom environment using an HDR image. You can create a custom environment by going to the environment menu and clicking on the create button, or you can start from a generic environment, which I will do and adjust the properties. So once you have the generic environment, just right click on the icon to open the properties menu. It is always a good idea to rename your background so you can easily recognize it. Now from the lighting tab, I will load the HDR image, which will create the lighting of my scene. Now this HDR image was found on open footage online and I have downloaded a large file and a small file. Now loading a large HDR image might affect the performance of Showcase, so you might want to load an HDR that is not too heavy to handle once in Showcase. So right away, once the HDR is loaded, you could see the effect on a car and you start seeing the reflection of this HDR image. Now you'll want to start adjusting the light properties of Showcase to match this HDR image. And the first thing you want to do is adjust the light condition to match the HDR image. Using the presets, for example, exterior nighttime will give you a very good starting point that you can later on fine tune. Now we can see the effect of the lighting in our scene and on the car, we can see the reflection of the environment, but we don't see the environment in the background as of yet because we haven't uploaded it in the background tab. I want to stop you here to show you that you can also uncheck the option use separate image for background and it will automatically use the same background image as you use to drive the lighting. Now the reason why I want to show you the process of loading your environment is that you can keep in mind that you can load a different image as a background environment. For this particular example, we will use the same image as we use for the lighting and review the steps involved into loading an image in a background environment. Once the image is loaded, it will most likely need to be repositioned to match your scene. To do so, under the background image, open the show more details where you'll be able to move the texture and realign it to match your scene. So what I'm doing right now is I am moving the HDR image location according to my environment shape. Now talking about the environment shape, you might want to reconsider what shape you are using for your background. Different shape background will work better depending on the image that you are using. So for example, you can have a rectangle background, you can have a hard edge pock or a half dome. So that will depend on the image that you have and the result that you're after. For my background, I find that the half dome works the best. You can also readjust the background image uh, brightness, but what I suggest to you is to fine tune your lighting settings first before you do any further adjustment for your background. So what also I suggest is that you tone down the lighting image contribution and directional lighting contribution all the way to zero and start fine tuning them as slowly reintroducing the contribution amount. So the lighting image contribution is basically the ambient lighting. So the lighting that is created by this HDR image, but does not create a shadow. So you can fine tune it until you have the result that kind of look like it belongs to your environment. Now the direct light contribution, if you look at the car, you see the result of the car becoming brighter or darker, and that is the direct sun uh, contribution. So the light that is creating shadow and highlight onto your car. So try to find an happy medium in between the ambient light created by your environment and the direct light created by your sun and try to match it to the HDR image that you have loaded. You will also need to adjust the directional light and shadows because the shadow that you have right now is just a generic shadow that came from the previous environment. So you need to readjust the shadow angle and intensity by moving the direct light. So as you can see here in the light properties for the background environment, I can start moving 
moving and repositioning the light to match the highlight on my car with what would be close to an highlight created by my HDR environment. So I'm repositioning the sun and it's affecting the shadow and it's affecting the highlights of the car and I try to find the perfect fit to match my HDR environment. I might also want to color the light of the sun because this is late at the end of the day. Most of the time the sun has a tint, a slight yellow peachy tint to it and I might want to add a little bit of color to my light to match my environment. Now the other thing you might want to do is increase the shadow resolution, the shadow color, the shadow softness. Just try to find the happy settings to match the light that would be created by this HDR environment. Now that you fine tune the lighting of this HDR image in your environment, you might want to fine tune the brightness of the background itself. So that is the image that is sitting in your background environment to match the light property that you have just fine tuned. Now keep in mind that this is one way to create custom environments. There are other ways which will give you more accurate and more photorealistic results, but this is one quick way that might give you good enough results for what you're looking for. Now to keep a nice reference to this um, new environment that you have just created, you might want to reset the uh, thumbnail image of your environment by hiding the content of your scene and setting the image, perhaps changing a position and orbiting around the environment to have a nicer uh, a thumbnail to uh, refresh your memory of what this environment looks like. Um, also, you might want to try ray tracing your objects with this new environment to make sure that it's giving you results that you're satisfied with in both type of rendering, hardware rendering and ray trace rendering. So like I said, there are many ways to create environment. Some ways are more accurate and will give you photorealistic results. This is a quick way to do an environment with an HDR image that you have download or that you have as part of your library. So something to keep in mind, you can always save this new environment into your library for future use or to share with other coworkers.